my name is Craig Mills from uh, Wilson Benish. I'm the design director. Uh, the other director of the company is Christina Mills. And the company is founded in Sheffield 25 years ago. It's our anniversary this year. Because the, 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 the analog market at that particular point in time was very interesting to, to us and we thought that we could make something better with the engineering expertise that we had. And I was confident that with a little bit of research we could create a product that would be highly competitive. Uh, maybe I was a little naive as well and that business is something that you have to learn over a long period of time, you don't learn about business overnight. But the turntable was a fascinating product and uh, it just gripped my, uh, my uh, desire to learn and research and find out more about how to make it better. The core technologies of Wilson Benish are in driver technologies, in carbon composites and in metal technologies all of which we have under the same roof at Sheffield in Yorkshire, England. The ability to manufacture is our key strength. It is the cornerstone of the company and it's what enables us to attract significant funding from government to the tune of half a million over the 25 years that we've been in business. So. The main thing about Wilson Benish is the desire to make things better through material science, which is why we focus specifically on products which have material science at the core of what makes them better. And it's these new technologies that we've introduced to the audio market that have made such a difference. This, uh, this speaker next to me is uh, our flagship and is essentially uh, a, a product which has been developed over a long, long period of time. The two drivers which are here are the isobarics, which essentially deliver the low frequency extension of the system. As you can see, there are two. But behind these two, you've got to imagine there are another two drive units. So essentially, these two drive units are what is called isobarically driven. Essentially, this means single pressure. That means that these two drive units think that they are just working in free space. So their resonant frequency is very low and therefore you get a very nice low frequency generation which is extremely free of distortion that you would normally find in a larger diaphragm. Of course the key, the key reason why we use this is so that the energy that comes from these two drivers, the low frequency energy, is exactly the same character of sound as you would get from the mid-range. It is this coherency that is unique in this product and sets it apart from other designs. These two drivers here, unlike this pair, have no crossover elements, so they are di directly connected to the amplifier. As a result of this, the coherence and the phase characteristics of these are impeccable. There is no crossover filament to distort the sound. It's directly connected to the amplifier, so the signal comes directly from the amplifier. And then we have our tweeter, which of course is a, a construction which is quite unique also. The diaphragm construction is a hybrid construction, but it is a soft dome as well as a hard dome. So you have a character of sound which is quite different also to most tweeters in the sense that you will have a seamless uh, extension of frequencies up to 30,000 uh, hertz, but you also have a, a soft dome. So you have this damping characteristic which soft domes are famous for. And this is what gives this particular tweeter a, a, a distinct advantage over so many different materials currently used in uh, tweeter diaphragms. All, this, uh, all these uh, systems are of course highly dependent on the cabinet structure which they are based upon. And here you can see we're making extensive use of alloys in order to reference the drive units. But also they act as damping, mutual dampers on the carbon composite structures which are used to control the energy the high levels of energy which are contained within. So the, the overall structure is not only extremely aesthetically pleasing, it, it's designed to look this way for engineering and acoustic reasons. A good amplifier for our speakers is a speaker which uh, delivers what the speaker does. In other words, we are very, very concerned about transient response, which is why we try to get rid of the filters. We're very concerned about coherence 
so we expect this from the amplifier. We're very concerned about an even bandwidth that, that is not exaggerating any particular one frequency or another or has got flaws in the frequency bandwidth. So at the end of the day, when we listen to the speaker, we want to be able to feel as though the sound is natural. And, and I would say that in particular the human voice, when you listen to a speaker, any of our speakers, if you're listening to the human voice, you, it's very revealing of how coherent and, 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 and natural it sounds. Of course, if you want to really demonstrate this in, uh, in terms of dynamics, then you need to go to something with a, a percussive uh, effect. And I think that the key here is that when you're listening to percussion, you should not just be able to hear the uh, initial transient response of the drum skin, but you should also be able to hear the decay into the distance of the drum as it slowly loses its energy. And it's this decay and this information that is so, so important and the preservation of it that's so important that is key to our designs. And if you've got an amplifier that can deliver this, then when it's matched with our speaker, uh, it, it, it can be a very rewarding experience because you can hear things that you've never heard before and this is what iEnd Audio is all about. Well, the home cinema system is essentially uh, exactly the same as any other system that we manufacture. We don't believe that there should be a system that is skewed from one or to the other one. If you're looking for a home cinema system then the foundation of any home cinema system is the low frequency and of course with the low frequencies we have the Taurus infrasonic generator which we patented. This provides the foundation for the sound and it is the low frequency that if anything you will modify for a home cinema system. So obviously with our amplifier there are two configurations that you can have and so it's once, once it is set up you have got the luxury of being able to have it configured for both cinema and music. So essentially what happens is with a cinema system the low frequency is boosted so that you can have that energy that you require in a, in a, in a, in a movie. However in a, a, a music system what you require is less of that low frequency energy because it would be over the top, it would be simply overpowering the rest of the music signal and, and interfering with the quality. So the Taurus is still fantastic, in fact it's designed for a, for a music system and uh, in fact we use, the, the Taurus have been used with a whole range of different products from other uh, leading loud, loudspeaker makers and uh, electrostatics as well as horn loudspeakers have been known to be using the Taurus with them because they are so fast and responsive. And that's the key. The key is if you get the low frequency right in any system, it's the foundation for everything that's built above. But if you get it wrong, <laughs> then it, it is more of a problem and it's probably better to turn it off, which is what a lot of people actually do sometimes with, uh, with audio systems when they have a, an average subwoofer. Some people actually do have, end up just turning the thing off. You, you cannot underestimate the importance of that infrasonic sound. And uh, this is the key to all our home cinema systems. The Taurus is the foundation from which everything else is built and it's the transient response of the Taurus that enables it to match seamlessly with our product and provide the same character of dynamics and transient response that you would expect from a Wilson Vanish product. Yes, essentially the, uh, the future for in-wall systems is obviously bright and it's a, 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 an area of uh, research that we've been looking into for two, two years now. The work that we've been doing on this is looking at all sorts of different uh, innovative ways to try to deal with the energy that's radiated from the back of the diaphragm. And we're confident that uh, in the not too distant future we'll be able to introduce technologies that will enable quite slender products to be uh, created which will not have some of the attributes of uh, our, our uh, colleagues as uh, designs and I think that the, uh, the future of this is, is obviously a, one that any loudspeaker company has got to take on board because it, it's absolutely important that the character of sound that you're deriving from any in-wall system is matched to what is coming from your main speakers. Uh, you cannot just simply put into the walls speakers that are uh, of an inferior quality and expect them to 
link up with and have a, a relationship that is meaningful with the main speakers. And of course, because we manufacture our own tweeter and we make a very nice mid-range unit and, drive, uh, and we make small speakers, we are very confident that the quality of sound that we will be able to get and the integration of the sound field from our products will be uh, outstanding. And in fact, we already have a Grammy Award winning uh, music producer who uses a, our 5.1 channels as part of his uh, system for, for creating uh, music for s film scores. So I'm quite confident uh, he's going to keep us in the loop with regard to developments in the future as far as uh, Atmos is concerned.